Good morning, guys, and welcome to Three Mississippi. Today, we're going to send some cornets across to winter camp. It's time to process birds, y'all. Let's get after it. Now guys, we have been raising and processing our own birds for many years now, and it is one of my favorite things to do is raise our own meat, uh, not only for ourselves, but uh, when we were still in California, we had a poultry business and we sold our birds regularly. Now this year we did a much smaller batch than we would typically do. Typically we would do hundreds of birds. This year we only did um, about 50 and uh, we did lose a few birds. So we've got about 40 now um, from the original shipment. And so, which happens guys, if you've ever raised birds before, you know. <laughs> so we're gonna be processing those out today. I'm gonna be setting up everything right here because we are gonna be having uh, off and on thunderstorms this uh, morning and this afternoon. So I'm hoping to bang these out as fast as I can, but I'm also gonna show you how we do it. Now keep in mind guys, YouTube does not like you to harvest your own food. So we are going to have to uh, strategically show how we do this in portions, but just know that I will be talking you through it the whole way. And I hope that you maybe learn something, maybe understand that your food doesn't just show up magically packaged in the grocery store. Someone has to raise it, someone has to process it. So let's start on that together, shall we? Guys, we usually use a chicken plucker. I just went to go pull it out of the, um, the shop and uh, it looks like there were some things piled into the plucker um, while it was being stored in the shop and the plug for it is completely chewed through and destroyed with no plug on it. So looks like we're gonna be plucking 40 birds by hand today. I am not a happy camper. Not even a little bit. in here. I'm probably going to add more ice to it, uh, but this is a good start. Once I get the water in here and the salt is in here, I hope bring that core temperature down. Within the first four hours, you want that bird's temperature to get down to 40 degrees internally. So that ice bath right after processing is really crucial to get it down to temp so that you can then bag it and either let it rest in your fridge for a few days before you want to consume it or to go ahead and bag it and freeze it. I'm going to go grab a couple more bags of ice to add in there. It is quite warm and humid today and I think the temperature just went up a few degrees so definitely going to need some more ice in there. But remember when you're processing out your own birds, it is not absolutely necessary that you let your meat rest before you consume it. However, it is absolutely necessary that you get that core temperature down as quickly as you can to help prevent any foodborne illnesses and keep the meat from spoiling with this poultry. Uh, I do recommend if you process your own birds and you're really excited and you want to eat one that night, don't. Let that meat rest for at least two days in the fridge. Uh, 100% recommend that. If you try to eat it right after you process it, you'll be like, wow, it seems kind of tough. Um, it won't be as good. And so I do recommend if you are not going straight from letting it rest and then freezing it, then um, 
I do absolutely recommend uh, letting it sit in your fridge for a couple days before you consume it. Usually the last thing you wanna do after you've processed birds all day is to eat chicken anyway. So give that bird a day or two to rest in your fridge and let that those muscles relax a little bit. Let that meat just kind of chill out. So the items that you'll need to process your birds that come in handy here, you're going to want a big tank on a propane burner. That's going to be your scalding pot. You're going to want to fill that up with water and you're going to want to put a few drops of Dawn dish soap in there. This is going to help uh, with the follicles so that they will release the feathers more easily when it's plucking time. And if you have a plucker, that is fantastic. As I mentioned, ours is down for the count, so we're going to be using our digits today. Thank goodness I have Frankie to help me. <laughs> uh, you're going to want a table. You're going to want a couple of sharp knives. I like to use the scalpels. Uh, sometimes I'll use this for certain things. And a good sharp pair of shears. This comes in handy for removing things like the heads. You're also going to maybe want some gloves. I like to use gloves when I do it. You're going to want to keep a thermometer handy so you can keep an eye on that scalding pot. You do want your scalding pot to be at around, everybody likes to do it a little bit differently. It also depends on what type of bird you're doing. Uh, anywhere between 150 and 165, depending on how the technique is that you scald. I kind of split the difference generally with these chickens and usually do about 158 or so. Uh, we like to use these cones, restraining cones. We simply uh, put them in there. I may run a, string of baling wire around this uh, post here just to bind their feet off with because sometimes the larger birds will try to kick out of that um, during the end stages so and then we of course have our our bucket there to help catch the draining of the stuff oh there we go that's the one i had out perfect frankie's got this all set up for us here uh she's a good worker man and then she's got the crate in the back of the Polaris because she's got to run halfway down into the front pasture here to collect birds to bring them to me so that we can get started. We're just waiting for our water to get up to temp now, but uh, it shouldn't be too much longer. And of course, you do want your cooler with your uh, ice water with your salt in there. As I mentioned, and I will continue to mention many times, you do want to make sure that you get those birds core temp down to 40 degrees within those four hours. Uh, that is crucial. So you do want to make sure that you are following through with that. And you also do want to make sure you have running water handy nearby. Makes cleaning the bird and the entire process uh, a lot handier. And I also like to keep a fly swatter by me uh, just in case you get a meat bee or something nearby. Um, and a lot of times I'll have a fan going as well. With the weather today, I'm not as worried about flies and bugs because it's just sort of, it's actually a really good day for processing. <laughs> But man, I wish my plucker was working. I am beyond bummed right now. day before we process, I don't feed whatever animal I'm processing. Uh, we do use a little bit of feed to keep them from bum rushing us out and to kind of entice them what we want them to do and keep the others occupied while we grab the few that we want to bring with us. <laughs> um, but this makes it easier when their stomachs and their crops are empty. It just makes them a little bit easier to process and obviously it's less waste because they're not going to be uh, converting that feed that fast into anything really useful for you. So there's no point in feeding them. That way they don't bum rush you. <laughs> oh, there you go. Now we did just get a bunch of rain. So these guys, unfortunately are gonna be a little bit muddy, <laughs> but we're gonna do the best we can here. <laughs>
mentioned before, guys, some of the actual dispatching process, I'm not going to be able to show you because YouTube really frowns on it and we could get in trouble. The last thing we want to do is lose our channel. So I'm going to show you as much as I can and explain the rest as best as I can. Um, basically, what I'm about to do is put the bird in the cone. I've got this bailing wire that I wrapped around this post. I'll be wrapping it around the leg just to kind of help hold. I'll be pulling the head through, turning to the side, moving some feathers. I'll be using my scalpel to cut that uh, parotid, and I'll do that on both sides. Um, and I will assist in the bleed out. Uh, the reason I like it to do it this way is because it does make for better meat, um, and they simply kind of, it's a quick, they pretty much go to sleep. There is what we would refer to as a death spasm or a death rattle. Um, this happens with any animal that you process in pretty much any way. I like to refer to it as kind of the lights are, are off and, and nobody's home <laughs> because uh, it's pretty much instant. They sort of essentially just lose consciousness and uh, relax, but there are muscle spasms. So um, you might think, oh, it's suffering or, oh, I did something wrong. No, that is completely normal. That is one of the reasons why I wrap the legs with the bailing wire uh, because during those spasms, oftentimes they can kick out of there um, and it just, they can bruise themselves, bruise the meat, um, and you don't want that. Uh, especially if you're going to be selling your, your poultry, you want that meat to be as sightly as possible. So you, you know, the less bruising, broken wings and things like that, uh, that you're dealing with, the better. So like I said, I'm gonna to try to show you as much of this as I can of this process. Um, we'll see how it shakes out in the editing room when I get to that part, but usually, uh, Within two to five minutes, they are uh, completely bled out and and done, and then we'll start the scalding and plucking process. Now, when you hold these birds upside down like this, you can see almost right away it calms down. It goes into what I like to call a trance, and it makes it a lot easier to kind of work with it. It's sort of, uh, sort of like the blood rushes to your head, sort of calms you down. So I'm going to pull this, pull the head straight taut here. I can see the artery when I do this. It kind of is straight back from their ear. Now I do like to hold their heads during this process. It assists with the bleed. It keeps them from pulling their heads back up into the cone and staunching the bleed, prolonging things. Uh, it just makes this go a little bit faster. Now while that is finishing uh, bleeding out, I'm gonna rinse off my blade um, in between. When you're doing a lot of birds, um, the blade will get gummed up during this process. Uh, sometimes it's nice to have two blades going, one for evisceration and one for uh, the actual dispatch just to keep them a little bit separate. All right, guys, it's time to go ahead and scald these birds. Our water temperature is a little lower than I want it, but everything's been fighting me this morning. So I'm going to go ahead and dunk it all the way up to the feet in kind of a half circle motion through here. Now we're going to check the feathers. I usually check the wings to see how easily they come off. Still a little tough on the harder wing feathers, so it needs a little bit longer in here. Now you want to be careful to not do this too hot or for too long because then you can scald the skin, which you don't want to do, but this is coming out. So I can go ahead and start plucking this guy. Now I usually do uh, 15 to 20 seconds <clears throat> the first round, depending on the exact temperature of my water. And I do keep a thermometer handy so I can keep an eye on it and turn it down off accordingly. So let's start plucking. For 
thing I'm going to do is remove the head. Now, if you've got pigs, that in a crock pot for a few hours with the feet is amazing. I know a lot of people like to save the feet. Uh, we always fed them to our pigs. We don't have pigs right now, and I don't like chicken feet, so we're not going for that today. I'm going to go ahead and reach in here. I'm going to loosen up the crop sack and the esophagus from the neck and the surrounding tissue. So now you can see I've got the crop free from the skin and I've got that esophagus free. Now again, when I use a plucker, these come out a lot more cleanly. I'm gonna have to do a lot more cleaning up on these birds before I um, bag them, but that's okay. Now, I'm gonna take this little area here. I flipped it over on its back. I'm gonna pull just the skin. So I'm gonna cut a little bit, just the skin around this area. Then I'm gonna flip it over. Everybody has different techniques of doing that. This is the way that I like to do it. This is a little butt nugget, as I call it, their little tail. I like to cut right above it and right along the side of the backbones. You're essentially cutting around the cloaca, which is also their waist sac. I'm gonna open this up. Then there's this membrane right here. You're gonna very carefully open this covering, this membrane here not too deeply because you don't want to pop the intestines if you can avoid it. Then I continue down and back around. So as you can see, I've opened up this cavity and I've exposed the, the inside where the intestines are and all the organs. We're going to go ahead and kind of gently stick our hand inside and break up that tissue that's connecting to the inside of the rib cage here and then down underneath, loosening that up from this end. Again, very gently so that you're not puncturing anything. Then again, I like to come back up through here, stick my hand down through the top where I loosened the crop and the esophagus and loosen a little bit more from this end, that connective tissue. Being very careful to scoop this out so you don't break the bile sac or the intestines. And if you grab a hold of that esophagus and pull, you can pull the crop right out the back end. Now you've got all your intestines out here and some of the organs and things that you want to keep. So we're gonna break those loose before we do anything else. We've got this lovely chicken liver here. We're gonna disconnect this from the bile sac. See this green sac right here? You do not want to puncture that sac. You want to, even if it means losing a, a little bit of the liver, um, you don't want to puncture that sac because they really, really are like little conjoined twins down there. So you want to make sure you, you get that off. And then I got the, the heart out as well, which we like to keep. Then right here, I've got the gizzard. I'm going to just detach that little piece from the gizzard there. And then you can, if you choose to, later you can break this apart and clean it. I am not going to be messing with the gizzards today, um, mainly because Frankie and I are doing this alone. The gizzards take a little bit of time to process out, and um, we don't have the plucker, so everything is going to be taking longer today. So we want to try to get this all done. So now, as you can see, the, uh, the cloaca shoot here, we're going to refer to it as, connects to that hole. We're going to cut that entire, uh, basically the rear end hole, the cloaca out. 
So you can feel the bones of the backs of the legs of the hip bones there. You're gonna just cut along the inside of that as close to the bone as you can. This is gonna make it easier to avoid um, any unsightly spillage of the uh, intestines. And then as you can see, now it's just loosely attached to the tail. And I remember I already loosened this. This is, I use that kind of as a guide for myself. And then I can just pop it right out. All intact, nothing broken. Nothing spilled, bile sac happy, everything else happy. I do like to rinse my table off in between. That is just from the, uh, the crop and the gizzard there. The gizzard is what breaks down some of their, their uh, proteins. So there's usually grit in their gizzard and that's kind of what you're seeing right there is that byproduct. Now there's still some things on the inside of this bird here. Um, this was a boy. I'll show you. Whoops, I missed it. These little white kidney beans. This was a rooster. Now, inside of here, you've got your, your uh, kidneys and then your lung tissue up against the lung, uh, lung tissue rather, up against the ribs and just a little bit of the esophagus that didn't pull all the way out. We're going to pull that the rest of the way out. And then we're gonna stick our hands in here. It's really hard to see you guys because it's very dark in there, but you can see up against that rib, we're gonna be rubbing our fingers up against that rib to loosen that lung tissue. You don't want that lung tissue in there. It gives off a really weird uh, smell and taste and it's really spongy. So eliminating it, uh, that one came out pretty much in one piece. Look at that, I got skills, baby. Um, I've done this a few times, can you tell? Um, you're going to just rub it up against the ribs until you can kind of feel it break free and pop out. And then down here, you've got your little pockets where your kidneys are. You're going to kind of, I like to use my knuckle. I know Mike likes to use his finger. I like to use my knuckle and then kind of push it and then pop it out. And usually they'll kind of come out in pieces. Um, a lot of times it's hard to get all of them out. Sometimes they pop out more easily than others. The larger the bird, the easier they pop out, in my opinion. Um, so just try to get as much of that out as you can. That's pretty clean bird right there. I like to give it a little rinse on the inside here. Now, if you notice, I still have the feet on it. I'm gonna show you how to take those off in just a sec. I like to get it run through nice and clean. But yeah, that's, that's, that's a beautiful cleaned out. You can see clear down there. Now you can take off more of this neck if you like. I like to leave a little bit when I'm processing. That's entirely up to you. You can also save the necks if you want to. Um, again, like I said, normally I would be saving the, oops, the gizzards uh, and that I may still set these aside and uh, see if Mike wants to clean them out later to make gravy or sauce or anything, but we're going to worry about that later. So for these, their joint is right here. So you're going to cut right where it bends towards you, right in between the knuckles right here. So if you think about it, when you have a drumstick, the way the knuckles are, and uh, you're going to cut right in between that joint where it bends. Just a little, this knife is dull. Apparently I did not grab a sharp knife. I should have grabbed the sharpening stone, but we'll do that later. And then right where it bends here on the back end, but you can see right where you're cutting through is right around that knuckle. And you're just gonna, I'm gonna get a sharper knife before I go on any further, but for purposes of showing you guys, then I'm gonna cut through that tendon. And then you've got yourself a chicken foot. Like if you want, if you have a plucker and you like chicken feet, I recommend running these definitely through the plucker because it will clean them. Like you could not get them cleaned by yourself. So uh, like I said, there's that. So you've got your, your gizzard, your heart, and your chicken feet if you want them. Um, I, the heads and the feet, like I said, are great for your pigs if you've got pigs that you like um to, to to feed this kind of stuff too they will love it i promise you and uh clean it off in between here again other legs same procedure you're just going in the knuckle here i'm gonna use my scalpel frankie's getting me the sharpening stone right now because that knife is not happy i need to sharpen it the scalpel is working a lot better but right in between that knuckle 
just like that. Now again, like I said, since this didn't go through the plucker, um, got a little bit of those pin feathers that we're going to want to clean up. Sometimes it's easier to go back through and clean these up after it sat uh, in the water. If you noticed while I was plucking the bird, I always start with the legs and the wings because those are the hardest feathers to get off. So when they're the hottest and freshest out of the scalding pot, that's when I like to remove those. But man, guys, this is a nice clean bird here. I would say this one's about this one's about three pounds. Um, and uh, this is one of our smaller ones. I started with this one just because uh, honestly, it's the one Frankie brought me and, and, and grabbed and put in the in the pen there. Um, so that's why I started with it. Usually we start with the larger ones first and give your bird a good rinse. Nice, clean inside and out. We used to have a table that had a hose uh, spigot that you could hook to it to give you give yourself a sink, but uh, did not make it with the move. So I'm going to have to order another one of these. But guys, that's a good looking little bird right there. We're going to put this in the cooler. Get this guy completely submerged in that cold water with that salt. Now I've got a little bit of, uh, I lost my lid, it went over. That's all right, I don't need it, it's in there somewhere. Now I'm going to put my organs in here. I've got my heart and my liver in here. I'm going to go ahead and leave these in here so it makes it nice and easy to keep them separate. We're going to let these guys sit in here. We're going to keep processing. Uh, and we're going to make sure, again, I can't say this enough, make sure that you get them nice and cold as fast as you can. You want them to hit that 40 degree temperature uh, internally within that four hour mark and as soon as possible. That's a good looking cooler. Whew, guys, we took a little break. I had to take Frankie to the eye doctor. Um, not having the plucker definitely has slowed us down today. Uh, this is the first time since my first year of having birds, not having the plucker and man, what a difference the plucker makes. Um, we've still got several more birds to do, um, but we've got a really good rhythm going now. We just got back from her appointment and so we're gonna crank him out, but then we're gonna have a lot of birds to bag. Um, I'm hoping maybe Mike will do that for me tonight because, uh, cause I'm gonna have to go go edit so uh hopefully maybe he can he can do that um because it's a it's a pretty quick process but it's also not <laughs> so uh those shrink wrap bags are pretty cool you just you know shove the bird in there and and you you have a little tube you put in there you put them in uh, i believe it's 180 degree water and uh it kind of shrinks around it you suck the air out and you tie it off and then uh you weigh it and you put your label on it and you're good to go. You can stick it right in the freezer. Um, and those are great. Frankie's just changing real quick. There she is, speak of the devil. And we're gonna get back at it. Um, I'm getting the water back up to temp and uh, we're gonna be doing that. Uh, the rest of, I think we can do the rest of them. There's not that many left. I think probably about two hours will be wrapped up. And uh, then those birds will be ready to be bagged later tonight after they've set on ice for a while and cooled down. I'll be able to uh, then get the uh, kitchen cleaned up from Mike uh, doing what he was doing in there with the pasta sauce and uh, be able to get those birds bagged. So anyway, guys, that's it. I, I hope you uh, enjoyed it. I know sometimes these more kind of somewhat instructional slash what we're doing videos, uh, sometimes you guys like them more, sometimes you don't, but it's what we're doing. and it's uh, how we do it so hope you guys enjoyed and if you haven't hit that subscribe button make sure you do that if you haven't hit that like button make sure you do that i did go into a little bit more detail today on sipping and spilling kind of about how we got into this and like why we like it um so feel free to go check that out if you're not subscribed to sipping and spilling and you enjoy our content go subscribe to our other channel our talking channel that kind of gives you some uh, behind the scenes information on what we're doing and kind of some future things that we're going to be doing on through Mississippi. So appreciate you guys. And as always stay blessed and safety's off.